is called Calvary, and that person is called Jesus. First Kings chapter 19, beginning at verse 1. The Bible says, And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, also how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life. And he went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servants there. But he himself, when a day's journey into the wilderness, came and sat under a juniper tree. And he prayed that he might die and said, It is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. Then, as he lay and slept under the juniper tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. And he looked And there by his head was a cake of bread on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat because the journey is too great for you. Today for the next few moments I want to share a message on the subject, the place of discouragement. When you and I read about the juniper tree in the Bible, it is a symbolism of discouragement. And this is where Elijah finds himself in 1 Kings chapter 19. I'm thankful that the Holy Spirit of God chose to record incidences in the life of men like Elijah. After he had prayed on Mount Carmel, he had seen the fire of God fall in such a dramatic way The Bible says that when he prayed, the fire of God fell on the altar that day, on the sacrifice, and after that, after that great experience, the Bible says here that he becomes discouraged. You see, the Holy Spirit of God not only chooses to record the great victories of the men of God and the women of God in the Bible, but also their faults and limitations. Did you know all great men and women of God somewhere along their life have gone through times of discouragement, depression, and despair? Even a great man of God like Charles Spurgeon, it was told of him that many times he had bouts of discouragement and depression. Even though he was a great preacher, a choice man of God, he too went through periods of depression and despair and discouragement. Here is a man who at the age of 22 years old was able to speak to over 5,000 people and yet he had to deal with discouragement and depression. Ladies and gentlemen, let me just tell you this morning that all people go through and face times of discouragement. Did you know that they tell us that during the Christmas season? Many people will face discouragement in their life. Their anticipation of what Christmas is all all about, their excitement about what it's all about, sometimes may not lead up to their expectations and soon they become discouraged. In fact, discouragement is one of the weapons in the devil's arsenal. He knows how to discourage us and defeat us. He wants to discourage you because if you fail to read the Word of God, if you fail to witness and live for God, then the devil knows that he can stop you and hurt you. Today as we think about the place of discouragement under the juniper tree, 
I want you to ask this morning that, have you ever been under the juniper tree? I think every single one of us in this building today, somewhere in our lives, have faced discouragement. We all have been under the juniper tree. In fact, did you know that even young people, teenagers, can become discouraged in their life as well? No one is really immune to discouragement. It happens to us all. The first thing that I want you to see in these verses of Scripture is that discouragement is common. It is a common thing even among the peoples of God. When you read about Moses, you will find that Moses experienced discouragement in his life. Abraham battled with it. King Saul struggled with it. David himself, the great songwriter of the Bible, encountered discouragement in his life. Jonah, they say, became so discouraged that he asked God to let him die. The Apostle Paul in the New Testament and John, the beloved John himself, battled with discouragement from time to time. So the question this morning is, why is it so common? Well, the first reason I believe it is so common is because of the enemy that you and I face. You see, you've got to understand in these verses of Scripture that Elijah is in a warfare. Elijah is in a battle. Elijah is facing a conflict in his life. He is engaged in conflict with the enemy. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid among the people of God, many times we fail to realize that in the Christian life, we war against the flesh the world, and the devil. We fail to realize that we're engaged in a war that Ephesians tells us is against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness in this world. Now, if you'll notice in 1 Kings, this man of God becomes discouraged right after the great high, the great experience in his life on Mount Carmel. I've had the privilege to stand on Mount Carmel. And to be there is such a tremendous opportunity. And to know that is where the great man of God, Elijah, prayed. And the, he prayed and the fire of God fell there that day. Did you know usually we face the greatest discouragement in our life right after the greatest victories in our life? It is easy to go from the mountaintop to the valley. In other words, a day, an evening can suddenly go from something great, a great victory in our life suddenly to discouragement and all of us face that in our life. Now, Elijah is just trying to do the will of God in his life. The television preachers would tell us that he doesn't have enough faith or perhaps he didn't send enough money and therefore he is discouraged and defeated. But ladies and gentlemen, the truth of the matter is that is not so in the life of Elijah. By the way, if you're praying, if you're witnessing, if you're tithing, if you're teaching, if you're preaching the Word of God, if you're working for the Lord Jesus Christ, I can warn you this morning that the devil will not leave you alone. He will do everything he can to discourage you and defeat you and stop you from doing those things in your life. He will cause you, if you're not careful, to become discouraged. You know, I've noticed that some people have seemingly a gift of discouragement. They're always ready to give you a word of discouragement. I heard about a man one time that was walking down the road and he discovered a map laying there. He picked it up and he rubbed it a little bit and out popped a genie. And the genie said, I can give you three wishes. What wishes would you like to have? But let me warn you that whatever you ask for, I have to give double that amount to your mother-in-law. What is your first request? And the man said, well, the first thing that I would like to have is a million dollars. So the genie gave him a million dollars, gave his mother-in-law two million dollars. 
The genie says, what is the second request that you would have? And he said, I would like a Rolls Royce. The genie gave him a Rolls Royce, gave his mother-in-law two Rolls Royces. What's the third request? The third request, he said, I would like, you to, like for you to beat me half to death. <laughs> well, you get the picture of the rest. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there are people who seemingly have been placed in your life by the devil to rob you of your joy of serving the Lord and discourage you in your life. Discouragement is something common to all of us because of the enemy that we face. But then secondly, discouragement is common because of the tendencies that we have. You see, we have the tendencies to react rather than to act in most things. Instead of acting, we react. Most of us, with the things that we're depressed and discouraged over, may not ever come to pass. The things that we seem to dread may not ever happen. Did you know that it has been documented that 90% of the things that we worry about never happen? And the other 10% that did happen, worry didn't change a thing? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we need to quit reacting and begin the acting by faith on the promises of God. God can work a miracle. God can do whatever it is that you're needing in your life. God is able to solve it like no one else can. Another reason why all of us face a common discouragement in our life is because of the humanity that we have. Notice what the Bible says here in verse 3. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servants there. Ladies and gentlemen, sometimes when you're reading the life of Elijah, you almost forget that Elijah is a human as well. He's a prophet, but he's flesh and blood just like all of us. He was just a human with human instincts. Now, the blessed thing about Elijah is that because he's a human, it proves that what took place on Mount Carmel was the hand of God. Ladies and gentlemen, sometimes we need to remember that we have limitations, that we can't do everything, but God can do everything. And what we need in our churches today is not what man can do, but what God can do. God can do such great and marvelous and mighty things until it blows our minds and all we can do is stand back, cross our arms, wag our heads and say, I don't understand it. That had to be the hand of God. Another reason discouragement is common is because of loneliness. The Bible says in verse number 3 that when Elijah heard that and saw that, he ran out and left his servants there. That simply means, ladies and gentlemen, that now he's by himself. It was when Elijah got to himself that he becomes discouraged and says, I wish I could die. Did you know that when the devil discourages you, he whispers in your ear and tells you to stay home all along? He tells you not to go to church. And did you know that I have found out down through my ministry that when people get discouraged, many times they quit church. Who do you suppose that voice is whispering in your ear to keep you away from church, to keep you away from Sunday school, to keep you away from worship, to keep you away from the fellowship among the saints of God? Well, it's certainly not God. Because in the book of Hebrews, the Bible says, Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, and even more so as you see the day approaching. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not the voice of God telling you to stay at home and to stay away from church and stay away from the house of God. No, that's the voice of the devil. 
And I want to tell you, the more that you sit at home, the more discouraged you become, and pretty soon you'll be just like Elijah, and you'll say, you know what, I'm so discouraged, I just wish I could die. We not only see this morning that discouragement is common, but secondly, we see that, that discouragement is crafty. You see, ladies and gentlemen, when you least expect it, discouragement will creep into your life. It can creep into your life in times of debilitating situations. Notice what the Bible says here in verse number 4. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat under the juniper tree and he prayed that he might die and said, It's enough. Now, Lord, take my life. I am no better than my father's. You see, friend, anytime someone in the church attempts to do anything for God, there will be those who will try to discourage you. There will be those who will try to oppose you, and so it was in the life of Elijah. You see, Elijah found out that there was opposition on every hand. Maybe he thought that God couldn't take care of this situation, but friend, God could. Look again at verse number 4. When he went out to a day's journey out into the wilderness and set up under that juniper tree, he prayed there by himself that he might die. Now there's something interesting here, and that is, did you notice there's no mention of God? If you'll recall other events in the life of Elijah, it was God who instructed him that he should go. For instance, God told him to go to the brook Cherith. God told him to go to the widow's house. And God told him to go and present himself to King Ahab. Here, he hasn't heard the voice of God. And perhaps, ladies and gentlemen, in times of unbelief, When we're depending upon our own strength, we have gotten our eyes off of God. It is in those times that discouragement can slip in. Discouragement can also slip in and find its way into our life when there's disappointment in our life. After making his way into the wilderness a day's journey, the Bible says that he just simply sat up under that juniper tree and requested that he might die and even said, I'm no better than those who have gone before me, God. What's wrong with me? What is he talking about? Well, ladies and gentlemen, in our terms, what Elijah was just simply saying, I've had it. You ever been to that place in your life? I've had it. He said, God, they didn't listen to the prophets before me and now they won't listen to me. I'm tired of it. I've had it. Just let me die in my misery. I mean, there are times when you do your absolute best. There's times when you give your all and nobody responds and it seems if nobody cares. By the way, if you've been in ministry very long and been doing ministry very long, there's been times in your life you felt just like that. Perhaps you saw no visible results for your labor and become discouraged. But here's a man who spent his whole ministry, listen, with people mad at him. Wouldn't you like to have a ministry like that? Everybody seemingly wants to kill him. Somebody's always giving them a hard time. There may be some of you here today that perhaps at work, there's an individual like that. Now, in Elijah's life, it was a lady by the name of Jezebel. Now, that person at the job may not be a Jezebel, but you know their name, and you know that they seemingly won't ever give you a break. Some of you may be married to a woman or a man who won't give you a break. I uh, heard about a woman and been married about 30 years. 
And seemingly in those 30 years, she never could make her husband happy. So she thought one day, I'm going to get up in the morning. I'm going to get all dressed up and pretty. I'm going to ask him when he comes out of the bedroom, what is it that you want for breakfast? And whatever he wants me to cook, I'm going to cook it. And so she did. So he came out of the bedroom and she says, Honey, what would you like for breakfast today? He said, I want a scrambled egg and I want a fried egg. She went into the kitchen. She cooked him a scrambled egg and a fried egg, added some uh, bacon and sausage and toast and jelly and put all of that stuff beautifully arranged on that plate, came in there and set it down. And he said, you can't do nothing, right, can you? And she began to cry. And she was so disappointed and so discouraged. And finally she said through sobbing tears, what have I done now? He said, you fried the wrong egg. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, there are some people you just can't make happy no matter what you do. Discouragement is common. Discouragement is crafty. But thank God discouragement can be conquered and overcome. Amen? You see, ladies and gentlemen, you may feel like this morning that you're in a paper bag and there's no way out. I want to tell you there's a hole in every paper bag. And the way out this morning is a person and his name is Jesus. First of all, discouragement can be conquered through, through refreshment physically. You see, sometimes you're just run down. Sometimes you're just given all you can give. And sometimes in your life, you just need to get away. Sometimes you need a physical refreshing in your life. Notice what verse 5 says. The Bible says, Then he laid and slept underneath a juniper tree, and suddenly an angel touched him and said, Arise and eat. Ladies and gentlemen, when you get a good night's rest, sometimes the problems today don't seem as bad as they did yesterday. Sometimes physically you just got to get away. Even Jesus from time to time would steal away and go up on the mountaintop and rest some. Ladies and gentlemen, sometimes you just need some sleep, some rest. You know what would... would would solve a lot of discouragement in our life is to just go to bed and fall asleep praying and have a good night's rest. Elijah not only needed some rest, but he also needed some food. And the Bible says that an angel come and perhaps nudged him in the side and said, Elijah, get up. I've spent all night cooking you some angel food cake. Had to be angel food cake, right? And not only was there food, a cake to eat, there was also water, the Bible says. Resting, eating right, hydrating right. All of those things come into play of how we feel. So sometimes we just need some physical re refreshment. Sometimes it's just good to get away and you come back and seemingly everything looks different. But not only can skirt discouragement be conquered through physical rest, but also through spiritual rejuvenation. Notice again what the Bible says here in verse 5. As he lay and slept under the juniper tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said, Arise and eat. And he looked, and there by his head was a cake bread on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. Verse 7, And the angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you. Look at verse 8. This is shouting grounds. So he arose and ate and drank, and he went in the strength 
of food 40 days and 40 nights as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. Man, he was refreshed physically. He was refreshed spiritually. And now he goes in the power of the Lord instead of his own power. And ladies and gentlemen, there are some of you today that are discouraged. You're sitting under a juniper tree. You're in the valley. Perhaps just a week or so ago, you was on a mountaintop. Man, everything was going your way. And then suddenly something happened. And the events of your life have turned. And you're discouraged. Can I just tell you this morning that there's a way out? Can I just tell you this morning that there is a remedy? Can I tell you this morning that there is a panacea for discouragement? His name is Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you this morning that the same God that was with Elijah on Mount Carmel is the same God that was with him there under the juniper tree. And God dispatched his angels to go and take care of him. No matter what the circumstances were in the life of Elijah, God always, always took care of him. How is that? Because God is an unchanging God. When he needed hidden, God hid him. God sent a widow to feed him in a time of famine. God sends his angels to care for him here in this passage of Scripture. And ladies and gentlemen, the same God that met the needs of Elijah can also meet ours. Even in the valley of discouragement, even sitting under our juniper tree, saying, I just wish I could die, God can send an angel to pick us up and help us to get on life's way. So if you're under the juniper tree today, you feel all alone, disconnected. No one cares and no one loves you. Let me just tell you today, God does. God sees where you are. God knows what you're going through. And God will help you to get out of that valley if you'll let him. Everyone, everyone at some time has sat under the juniper tree.